Hi students, good morning all of you. Hope you are all doing good. Welcome to lecture 10 in theory of equations. Hope you are all watching the previous lectures in this topic. In this lecture, I will be discussing how to solve polynomial equations with complex roots and how to solve polynomial equations with irrational roots. We will start this lecture with a lemma first. Here is the statement of the lemma. Let f of x be a polynomial with the real coefficients and let alpha be a complex number then f of alpha bar is equal to f of alpha whole bar. That means you are given a polynomial f of x with real coefficients and alpha be a complex number then the value we get after substituting the conjugate of a complex number in the polynomial is the same as the value uh, the value we get after substituting the complex number alpha in the polynomial and then take the conjugate of it both values are one and the same here is the proof of the, the proof of the lemma let f of x is equal to summation k is equal to 0 to n a k into x to the power n minus k. We are writing the polynomial in the compact form using the summation notation. Here a k indicates the coefficients of a polynomial and n minus k as you substitute the values of k starting from 0 to n the powers of x decreases actually. Okay. Now we substitute alpha bar in the polynomial that means substitute alpha bar in the polynomial we get summation k is equal to 0 to n a k into alpha bar whole to the power n minus k then this becomes summation k is equal to 0 to n a k into alpha to the power n minus k whole conjugate we have used the following property of the complex number that means uh, Conj first take the conjugate and raise it to the power n is the same as first raise it to the first raise the power n and then take the conjugate of it for every complex number we have this property we have used this property in order to write this term <coughs> now this term can be rewritten as a k into alpha to the power n minus k whole conjugate here we are using the following two properties of the complex numbers z1 z2 whole conjugate is same as z1 conjugate into z2 conjugate and uh, since a k is real for all k we have this property a k conjugate is equal to a k that means first a k conjugate is same as a k we can write this uh, write a k as a k conjugate also and using this property z1 z2 whole conjugate is equal to z1 conjugate into z2 conjugate we write the we write the entire summation in this in this form a k alpha to the power n minus k whole conjugate whole summation <coughs> now this can be written as summation k is equal to 0 to n a k alpha to the power n minus k whole conjugate this is same as f of alpha whole conjugate we have used this property of the complex numbers z1 plus z2 whole conjugate is equal to z1 conjugate plus z2 conjugate okay so we have started with f of alpha bar and we have ended up with f of alpha whole conjugate hence we have proved the lemma we use the following lemma to prove a theorem here is the statement of the theorem let alpha let f of x be a polynomial of degree n greater than 0 with the real coefficients and let alpha be a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0 of multiplicity m an alpha bar is also a root of f of x is equal to 0 of multiplicity m. Here alpha bar is conjugate of a complex number alpha. Let us try to understand the statement of the theorem. 
Here, if you are given a polynomial of degree n greater than 0 with the real coefficient, this is very, very important. And if at all alpha, if at all a complex number alpha is a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0 with the multiplicity m, then its conjugate alpha bar is also a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0 with the same multiplicity. Okay. Here is an example of that. Let f of, consider the polynomial f of x is equal to x minus 1 into x square plus 1 that is equal to x cube minus x square plus x minus 1. Observe here the coefficients of the polynomial f of x are all real. Okay. The roots of f of x is equal to 0 are 1 comma i comma minus i. If you observe if i is a root then minus i is also a root. The conclusion holds true here because the roots are real. The, the coefficients of f of x are real. Now let, let us look at this example. j of x is equal to consider this polynomial g of x, g of x is equal to x minus 1 into x minus i that is equal to x square minus r 1 plus i into x plus i. If you look at the roots of g of x is equal to 0, the roots are 1 comma i but minus i is not a root of g of x is equal to 0. The conclusion of the above theorem fails here. Why it has failed? Because it has it is not satisfying the hypothesis of the theorem. What does the hypothesis say? The hypothesis says the coefficients of the polynomial must be real, but the coefficients of g of x are not real. The coefficients are not real, so that's why the conclusion failed here. Okay? Let us prove this theorem. Here is the proof of it. It is given that alpha is a root of f of x is equal to 0 of multiplicity m, then this can be represented mathematically as below. Kth derivative of f evaluated at alpha is equal to 0 for k is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to m minus 1 and mth derivative of f evaluated at alpha is not equal to 0. Okay, the, since the coefficients of f of x are real, the coefficients of kth derivatives of f are also real, where k is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to m. Now let us evaluate kth derivative of f at alpha bar by the previous lemma, this, is, this value is equal to kth derivative of f evaluated alpha whole conjugate. And we have seen this quantity is 0. This is equal to 0 bar that is equal to 0 because 0 conjugate is 0 for all k starts from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to m minus 1. And this mth derivative of f evaluated alpha bar is equal to mth derivative of f evaluated alpha whole conjugate. And this is anyway not equal to 0. So this is not equal to 0. Okay. Hence, we get kth derivative of f evaluated alpha bar is equal to 0 for k is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to m minus 1 and mth derivative of f at evaluated alpha bar is not equal to 0. Hence, alpha bar must be a root of f of x is equal to 0 with multiplicity m. Hence, the proof of the theorem. Let us discuss a problem now. Here is the first problem. Form the cubic equation with real coefficients, two roots of which are 1 comma 3 minus root of minus 2. Okay. Let us find out the solution for this. Here is the solution. Okay. Let f of x be the required polynomial equation polynomial equation 
with the real coefficients okay it is given that वन काम थ्री मैनस् रूट आफ मैनस् टू आर् रूट आफ रूट आफ एफ आफ एक्स इज ईक्वल टू जीरो बै थीरम वी हव प्रूव एर्लियर इफ थ्री मैनस् root of minus 2 that is equal to 3 minus i root 2 is a root is a root of f of x is equal to 0 then 3 plus i root 2 is also is also a root of f of x is equal to 0 therefore the required cubic equation is required cubic equation is f of x is equal to x minus 1 into x minus 3 plus i root 2 into x minus 3 minus i root 2 so this is equal to x minus 1 into this can be written as x minus 3 minus i root 2 into x minus 3 plus i root 2 so this is a minus ib form this is a plus ib form so that is equal to x minus 1 into a square plus b square so x minus 3 whole square plus 2 so that is equal to x minus 1 into this is x square minus 6x plus 9 plus 2 that becomes 11 so if we expand it then we get x cube minus x square coefficient you require so x should get multiplied with x coefficient so this becomes minus 6 so 1 gets multiplied with x square so this becomes minus 1 into x square now x coefficient if you want x get multiplied with the constant term that is 11 minus 1 into minus 6 that is plus 6 actually into x and the constant term this is minus 11 so the required polynomial is x cube plus 7 x square plus 17 x minus 11 actually so here is the final answer here is your f of x so the required polynomial is a required polynomial is x cube plus 7 x square plus 17 x minus 11 is equal to 0 ok let us solve one more problem here is the next problem solve the equation 3x cube minus 4x square plus x plus 88 is equal to 0 which has 2 minus i root 7 as a root of it. Let us try to solve this problem. Here is the solution. Given equation is 3x cube minus 4x square plus x plus 88 is equal to 0 and it is given that it is given that 2 minus i root 7 is a 
is a root of maybe I will call this as equation 1 is a root of equation 1 ok observe that the coefficients of equation 1 are real by the theorem we have studied if 2 minus i root 7 is a root is a root of equation 1 then 2 plus i root 7 is also a root of equation 1 so this implies 2 plus i root 7 comma 2 minus i root 7 are roots of equation 1 let alpha be the remaining root so let us consider sum of the roots s1 is equal to alpha plus 2 plus i root 7 plus 2 minus i root 7 that is equal to minus of minus 4 divided by 3 that is equal to 4 by 3 so this is alpha plus 4 is equal to 4 by 3 implies alpha is equal to 4 by 3 minus 4 that is equal to minus 8 by 3 so the remaining root alpha is equal to minus 8 by 3 ok so the roots are the roots of equation 1 are 2 plus or minus i root 7 comma minus 8 by 3 ok let us solve one more problem solve the equation x power 4 plus 2x cube minus 5x square plus 6x plus 2 is equal to 0 given that 1 plus i is one of the roots ok let us try to find out the solution for this here is the solution let f of x is equal to x to the power 4 plus 2x cube minus 5x square plus 6x plus 2 ok it is given that first observe that all the coefficients of f of x are real and it is given that it is given that 1 plus i is a root of f of x is equal to 0 therefore by the theorem which we have studied earlier if 1 plus i is a root of f of x is equal to 0 then 1 minus i is also a root of f of x is equal to 0 this implies 1 plus or minus i are roots of f of x is equal to 0 so this implies x minus of 1 plus i into x minus of 1 minus i 
that is equal to x minus 1 minus i into x minus 1 plus i that is equal to x minus 1 whole square plus 1 that is equal to x square minus 2x plus 2 is a is a factor of f of x okay so let us try to find out the other factor so we use the synthetic division we use the Horner synthetic division to find out the other factor let us write down the coefficients here so we have got we have got x square minus 2x plus 2 is a factor of f of x okay now let us try to factorize that so let me write the coefficients one by one so one and two here minus five six and two so this is the coefficient of x to the power four this is the coefficient of x cube this is the coefficient of x square this is the coefficient of x this is the coefficient of x to the power zero now this is minus p you write it in the form x square minus px minus q so minus px means 2 here and minus q means minus 2 here minus 2 here okay now let me draw a horizontal line here so first you have to write 0 and 0 I have to add so 2 into 1 that is equal to 2 and here it becomes 0 so if I add these two then it becomes 4 now this is 2 into 4 that becomes 8 minus 2 into 1 that is minus 2 so 8 minus 5 minus 2 is 1 now 2 into 1 is 2 minus 2 into 4 is minus 8 so 6 plus 2 minus 8 that becomes 0 now afterward this becomes 0 minus 2 into 1 is minus 2 if i take the sum this becomes 0 so the remainder is 0 so therefore this f of x is equal to x square minus 2x plus 2 into x square plus 4x plus 1 now let us solve let us solve x square plus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0 the roots are the roots are minus 4 plus or minus under root b square that is 4 square minus 4 into a into c that is 1 into 1 divided by 2 into 1 so that is equal to minus 4 plus or minus 16 minus 4 is root 12 divided by 2 so if i take common 2 then this becomes minus 2 plus or minus root 3 so therefore the roots of the equation the roots of the equation f of x is equal to 0 r 1 plus r minus i comma minus 2 plus r minus root 3 ok so hence we have solved the equation completely let us solve one more problem here is the problem solve x to the power 4 minus 4x square plus 8x plus 35 is equal to 0 given that 2 plus i root 3 is a root of the equation 
let us find out the solution for this here is the solution let f of x is equal to x to the power 4 minus 4x square plus 8x plus 35 observe that all the coefficients all the coefficients of f of x are real okay and it is given that it is given that 2 plus i root 3 is a root of f of x is equal to 0 so by the theorem that we have studied earlier if 2 plus i root 3 is a root of f of x is equal to 0 then 2 minus i root 3 is also a root of f of x is equal to 0 this implies both 2 plus i root 3 comma 2 minus i root 3 are roots of f of x is equal to 0 okay this implies x minus 2 plus i root 3 into x minus 2 minus i root 3 is a is a factor of f of x that is so this can be written as x minus 2 minus i root 3 this is x minus 2 plus i root 3 so that is equal to x minus 2 whole square plus 3 that is equal to x square minus 4x plus 7 is a factor of factor of f of x is equal to 0 uh, yeah. now let us find out the factor using the Horner synthetic division let us continue the problem here continuation let me write so we have got x square minus 4x plus 7 is a is a factor of f of x now let me write the coefficients of f of x here it is 1 here it is 0 and this becomes minus 4 this becomes 8 this is 35 so this is x to the power 4 coefficient this is x cube coefficient this is x square coefficient this is x coefficient this is x to the power 0 coefficient now here it is 4 and this is minus 7 now let me draw a horizontal line here so first you have to write 0 and 0 here 1 then 4 into 1 is 4 and here I have to write 0 so this becomes 4 so 4 into 4 is 16 minus 7 into 1 is minus 7 so 16 minus 7 is 9 9 minus 4 is 5 
so 4 into 5 is uh, 20 minus 7 into 4 is uh, minus 28 so if I sum up these two this becomes 0 so this anyway becomes 0 minus 7 into 5 is minus 35 if I sum up these two this becomes 0 so the remainder is 0 so therefore this f of x is equal to x square minus 4x plus 7 into x square plus 4x plus 5 now let us solve let us solve x square plus 4x plus 5 is equal to 0 the roots are minus 4 plus r minus b square that is 16 minus 4 into a into c divided by 2 into 1 that is equal to minus 4 plus r minus under root 16 minus 20 that is equal to minus 4 divided by 2 so that is equal to minus 4 plus r minus plus r minus 2 plus r minus 2 divided by 2 so that is equal to minus 2 plus r minus i ok so therefore the roots of f of x is equal to 0 r 2 plus r minus i root 3 comma minus 2 plus r minus i here it should be i ok so these are the roots of the given polynomial f of x is equal to 0 let us solve one more problem here it is given that minus 2 plus square root of minus 7 is a root of the equation x power 4 plus 2x square minus 16x plus 77 is equal to 0 then solve it completely let us write down the solution for this here is the solution solution let f of x is equal to x to the power 4 plus 2x square minus 16x plus 77 observe that all the coefficients of f of x are real and it is given that it is given that minus 2 plus under root square root of minus 7 that is equal to minus 2 plus i i root 7 is a root of f of x is equal to 0 so by a theorem we have studied already if minus 2 plus i root 7 is a root is a root of f of x is equal to 0 then minus 2 minus i root 7 is also a root is also a root of f of x is equal to 0 so therefore minus 2 plus i root 7 comma minus 2 minus i root 7 are roots of f of x is equal to 0
this implies x minus half minus 2 plus i root 7 into x minus half minus 2 minus i root 7 is a factor of f of x so this implies this can be written as x plus 2 minus i root 7 into x plus 2 plus i root 7 this is equal to x my x plus 2 whole square plus root 7 whole square that is equal to x square plus 4x plus 4 plus 7 is plus 11 therefore let me continue in the next page here is the continuation so we have got x square plus 4x plus 11 as a factor of f of x now let us find out the remaining factor of f of x using Horner synthetic division let me write the coefficients here and 1 comma 0 and 2 minus 16 and 77 let me write let me draw a vertical line and here p comma q r minus 4 comma minus 11 here i am writing 0 and 0 here okay so if i add these terms then this becomes 1 minus 4 into 1 is minus 4 that becomes 0 so sum is minus 4 minus 4 into minus 4 is 16 minus 11 into 1 is uh, minus 11 so 16 plus 2 is 18 18 minus 11 is 7 so minus 4 plus minus 4 into 7 is uh, minus 28 minus 11 into minus 4 is 44 so that becomes 0 so here anyway i will write 0 minus 11 into 7 is uh, minus 77 if i add these two this becomes 0 so the remainder is 0 so therefore this f of x is equal to x square plus 4x plus 11 into x square minus 4x plus 7 now let us solve x square minus 4x plus 7 is equal to 0 the roots are the roots are minus of minus 4 plus r minus b square it is 4 square minus 4 into 7 into 1 divided by 2 so that is equal to 4 plus r minus under root 16 minus 28 16 minus 28 is uh, minus 12 divided by 2 that is equal to 4 plus r minus 2 root 3 divided by 2 is uh, i into 2 root 3 so that is equal to 2 plus r minus i root 3 so therefore the roots of f of x the roots of f of x is equal to 0 r minus 2 plus r minus i root 7 comma 2 plus r minus i root 3 so these are the roots of a given equation f of x is equal to 0 let us continue the solution here here is the continuation suppose we will prove this with the using a contradiction suppose equation 1 has complex roots 
that means roots complex numbers as a roots of equation 1 okay let if possible p plus iq is a root is a root of the given equation the root of the given equation implies a square divided by p plus iq minus alpha plus b square divided by p plus iq minus beta plus c square divided by p plus iq minus gamma is equal to p plus iq minus delta maybe you call it as equation 2 taking the conjugate on both sides take conjugate on both sides we get a square divided by p minus iq minus alpha plus b square divided by p minus iq minus beta plus c square divided by p minus iq minus gamma is equal to p minus iq minus delta call it equation 3 Now let us subtract three from two. We get a square into one by p plus i q minus alpha minus one by p minus i q minus alpha plus b square into 1 by p plus i q minus alpha this is beta minus 1 by p plus i q minus beta so this is p minus plus c square into 1 by p plus i q minus gamma minus 1 by P minus IQ minus gamma is equal to so PP gets cancelled this becomes 2 into IQ okay let us continue the next part here continuation this becomes A square into this is P minus IQ minus alpha minus P plus IQ minus alpha So this is minus divided by P minus alpha whole square plus Q square plus B square into P minus IQ minus beta minus P plus IQ minus beta divided by P minus beta whole square plus Q square plus c square into p minus iq minus gamma minus p plus iq minus gamma divided by p minus gamma whole square plus q square that is equal to 2 into iq now this becomes a square into so is p minus p gets cancelled i minus alpha plus alpha gets cancelled then i get minus 2 into iq divided by p minus alpha whole square plus q square plus 
<coughs> plus b square into minus 2y q divided by p minus alpha whole square plus q square and plus c square into minus 2y q divided by p minus gamma whole square plus q square minus 2y q is equal to 0. Now I take common minus 2y q from all these terms. I get a square divided by p minus alpha square plus q square plus b square divided by p minus beta whole square plus q square plus c square divided by p minus gamma whole square plus q square is equal to 0. So this implies okay and here this becomes plus 1 into is equal to 0. So this implies the product of two terms is equal to 0 implies minus 2 iq is equal to 0 or this term a square that means either this is equal to 0 or this is equal to 0 but this anyway not equal to 0 implies this is equal to 0 implies q is equal to 0. So, this implies, but P plus IQ is a root of equation 1 where Q not equal to 0. Since P plus IQ is complex. So this implies, that means we get a contradiction. Because we have taken, we have started with q not equal to 0, but we have, at the end we have got q is equal to 0. So we have got a contradiction. So that's hence, it is proved. Let us continue in the next page, continuation, let if possible the given equation has non-real complex roots complex roots complex root p plus iq that is q must not be equal to 0 because a root is strictly non-real complex if and only if the imaginary part is not equal to 0 ok let so since p plus iq is a root of the given equation it will satisfy that it will satisfy equation 1 let us substitute p plus iq in the given equation p plus iq minus alpha plus b square divided by p plus iq minus beta plus c square divided by p plus iq minus gamma is equal to p plus iq minus delta. Let me call it as equation 2. Taking conjugate on both sides. taking conjugate on both sides 
we get a square divided by p minus i q minus alpha plus b square divided by p minus i q minus beta plus c square divided by p minus i q minus gamma that is equal to p minus i q minus delta call it equation 3 now equation 2 minus equation 3 we get a square into 1 by p plus i q minus alpha minus 1 by p minus i q minus alpha plus b square into 1 by p plus i q minus beta minus 1 by p plus i q minus this is p minus i q minus beta plus c square into 1 by p plus i q minus gamma minus 1 by p minus i q minus gamma is equal to 2 into i q okay let me continue the solution here here is the continuation then a square into this becomes p minus i q minus alpha minus p plus i q minus alpha divided by this is p minus alpha whole square plus q square plus b square into p minus i q minus beta minus p plus i q minus beta divided by p minus beta whole square plus q square plus c square into p minus i q minus gamma minus p plus i q minus gamma divided by p minus gamma whole square plus q square is equal to 2 into i q so if you simplify this then i get 2 into i q this is minus 2 i q divided by p minus alpha whole square plus q square plus v square into minus 2 i q divided by p minus beta whole square plus q square plus c square into minus 2 i q divided by p minus gamma whole square plus q square is equal to 2 i q now if i get this term this side and i take minus 2 i q common in every term i get a square divided by p minus alpha whole square plus q square plus b square divided by p minus beta whole square plus q square plus c square divided by p minus gamma whole square plus q square plus 1 is equal to 0 so if a product of two terms is equal to zero then this is equal to zero and this is not equal. one of the one of them must be zero anyway this is not equal to zero implies minus 2 iq is equal to zero implies q is equal to zero but this is a contradiction this is a contradiction why it is a contradiction because we have assumed q not equal to zero in the beginning so 
therefore by method of contradiction proof by method of contradiction proof by method of contradiction the result is proved the result is proved okay hope you have understood the solution that means since we have assumed that if possible it has a complex roots then we are arriving at a contradiction so there is no chance that the above equation has a complex root so it must have only real roots okay